Hi everybody, this is Elena Platinova with Art Explained. Today I'm going to tell you about my five favorite solo booths at Freeze LA. Freeze is an annual art fair that takes place in London and New York. This year, for the first time ever, Freeze set up its proverbial white tent on the premises of the Paramount Picture Studios in Los Angeles. I have to say that the fair really delivered. The quality of the art on view was really high. But one of the coolest things about the fair was actually that the visitors could imagine themselves simultaneously in Los Angeles and in New York. That's because the Paramount Picture Studios made one of its movie sets available to the public, and the set looked exactly like New York City streets. The best part, however, was still inside that white tent. There was so much fantastic art on view, I could spend hours telling you about it. So I will focus on five best one-person booths at Freeze. Here they are. The first best booth out of the five I picked at the fair was presented by Jeffrey Deitch, a gallerist in Los Angeles and New York. Jeffrey showed the work of Judy Chicago. Judy is an American artist known for her feminist work primarily, especially the dinner table on permanent view at the Brooklyn Museum in New York. It is basically a gigantic table set with ceramic plates, each representing a certain prominent woman who left her mark in history. Jeffrey, however, decided to show less known work by Judy from the late 1960s and early 1970s. It is mostly minimalist work exploring color. As for instance, this series of drawings that were supposedly found by Deitch in a drawer in Judy's studio. I find this zigzag sculpture particularly interesting. Well, first of all, because it was made as early as in 1965 and then destroyed because supposedly it was too cumbersome for Judy to keep in her studio. She just recently recreated it, well, basically this year. And I think that the production also deserves attention. It's made out of plywood, or wrapped in canvas, and then covered in paint. So the surface is very smooth and very opaque, without visible seams, and I think it's a very indicative of the high-quality craftsmanship that's typical of Judy's practice in general. The second best booth at Freeze LA was by Gallery Almond Resch, showing the work of Vivian Springford. Vivian was an American artist who was active on the abstract expressionist scene from the 1950s through the 1970s. And then she sort of disappeared into obscurity. Almond Resch just recently announced their representation of the estate of the artist. And I think as it usually happens when such a powerhouse takes over an artist's estate, her work will gain more and more exposure and the prices are quite likely to go up as well. So Almond Resch showed two bodies of work by Vivian at the fair. First, works from the 1960s, uh, both paintings and works on paper, that are rather muddy and moody and almost violent in their expressive strokes. Those works are supposedly inspired by Chinese calligraphy. Although to me, they looked more like Japanese abstract expressionism rather than American. And the second body of work were pieces from the 1970s uh, made in acrylic on canvas. Those were pure color field abstraction, very vibrant with thin washes of gorgeous color. They actually resembled large-scale watercolors. This booth attracted a lot of food traffic and I think the efforts that Almond Resch are making on behalf of the artist estate, she actually passed away in 2003, they will pay off because the work is really good. 
in my humble opinion. My favorite booth number three was presented by London's Victoria Miro Gallery. Victoria Miro showed Secundino Hernandez, a Spanish artist who at 44 is still relatively young, but is already quite celebrated. The gallery cleverly divided their booth in two by erecting a tall wall and uh, putting three pieces by Hernandez on one side of the wall and another trio on the other side. The first three were monochromatic, mostly beige and black, and also minimal, and the other three works were very emotional and colorful. I have to say that this booth attracted more selfies than any other booth at the fair. Partially because of the clever positioning, because it was just in the middle of everything and you couldn't miss it even if you wanted to. But also because of Hernandez's technique. He uses so many different methods. He smears his paint, he scratches the canvas uh, probably with the other side of the brush. Now he sometimes pushes the paint right out of the tube onto the canvas. So the result is quite impressive and coupled with the monumental scale of the pieces, it was very compelling and, as I said, attracted lots of attention. My favorite booth number four was a presentation of works by Sanya Kantorovsky, a young rising star who was born in Moscow, by uh, Modern Art Limited from London. Those of you who grew up or lived in Eastern Europe will recognize the importance of illustrations and cartoons on Sanya's style. He is just so very good at expressing existential struggle, at portraying universal human emotions, love, longing, angst, that usually cannot be easily expressed in words. So he does it with his quite idiosyncratic line. Check out, for instance, this little sabachonka or little dog. It is actually entitled in Russian. It's almost monkey-esque, isn't it? And how about these, as I call them, four stages of development from a politician into a gangster? It is just incredible at showing Sanya's psychological insight. And finally, the fifth top booth at Frise LA was presented by Aquavella Gallery from New York. They showed Wayne Thibault, the California master who came to prominence in the 1960s as a pop artist. He's best known for depicting everyday objects such as deserted store counters, ice cream, cakes with thick, colorful brushwork. The gallery presented quite a variety of Thibault's work, both in terms of subject matter, they had some of his signature still lifes, California landscapes, also in terms of technique, um, alongside paintings there was this beautiful etching of an ice cream cone, hand painted with graphite, and also in terms of chronology. You could see some works from the 1960s, 90s, 2000s, and sometimes it was really interesting to compare some of Thibault's early work to the pieces he has made recently. He's actually 99 years old right now. I'd like to conclude with this fun painting of dogs playing on the beach. It is such a fun and yet charged moment of arrested motion, such a huge contrast to Thibault's typically still compositions. Alright, uh, these were my top 5 solo booths at Freeze LA. What do you think? Do you agree with my selection? Do you have any suggestions? Please let me know in the comments down below and put thumbs up next to this video if you liked it. Thank you very much for your time. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, I appreciate you watching my videos. It was Elena Platinova with Art Explained. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.